Order. Order in the court. You will not raise your voice in my court. I don't have all day. I have to get to school. I can hear you just fine. You don't have to raise your voice. What's this? The plan. But I can't read this, Grandma, Judge Evans. Don't tell me you can't read. I don't know what this is. And you call yourself a lawyer. No, I don't. I'm your granddaughter, Dina. We're at home. It's 7 AM. Can you eat your brand for me this morning? Alzheimer's. Memory. Stroke. Paralysis. Brain tumor. Surgery. Epilepsy. Seizures. It's natural to simplify these complex, let's be honest, scary conditions down to their most identifiable symptoms or outcomes. But many times, these generalizations can make things even more frightening. Which is why we have worked for years to help our patients and their caregivers more fully understand what they're experiencing and why. And with so many exciting advances happening in the fields of neurosurgery and neuroscience, we can offer more than just information. We can offer hope. But we didn't want to wait until people became our patients to share what we've learned in our years of surgery and research. We wanted to bring them into the conversation now. We wanted to bring them something intimate and personal, something that brings our fascination and awe of the brain into their everyday lives. We led a creative team to turn some of our most compelling and memorable cases dealing with stroke, epilepsy, brain tumors, and Alzheimer's into a four-act play called Brainworks the theater of neuroscience. Mixing neuroscience with live theater allows you to not only explore the wonders of the brain, but also to empathize with the characters on the stage. It provides a very human perspective of how the brain works and what the emotional toll is when it doesn't. This episode will unpack what is actually happening in the brain of an Alzheimer's patient and follow her caregiver as she strives to keep a meaningful connection. Welcome to the Theater of Neuroscience. Why is this so enjoyable? Shh. Seriously, Eric, we're in the theater. I am being serious, Albert. What is it about an open umbrella on stage that's so enjoyable? What part of the brain does that tickle? Tickle? That guy there, he tickles me. Humans are funny. And serious. Look how determined that guy is. They're all serious in their own way. After all, we know what it's like to be stuck in a storm. We're fundamentally hardwired to struggle on. Right, so it taps into some primal memory, but we also know we're in the theater and there's no actual rain. And yet open umbrellas make us imagine rain. We don't just imagine the rain. We actually feel the rain in our minds. So when I see actors holding umbrellas in the rain, you're right up there with them on a neurologic level. When you see somebody doing something, your brain experiences it as if you're actually doing it. That's why we come to the theater. Our brains light up when we see another human fighting their way through the storm. Absolutely. But it's not exactly singing in the rain. Mm, Albert, <laughs> I hate musicals. You know that. Yeah. <laughs> but you're right. Thanks to our increasing life expectancy, nearly half the people on the planet will have some disease of their brain. But the advances we're making in neuroscience are equally encouraging. Doctors, join us! Oh, they can do that? Talk right to us? The magic of theater. Join, join us! Like, get on stage with you? Dr. Luthor, Dr. Kim, you are a part of this story. We, we are your patients. And, and we are their caregivers, their loved ones. And all of us are caught in this storm together. Please, join, join us! Albert, what do you think? I thought we were just going to do our TED talk about the brain after the play. <laughs> It'll be a lot more interesting. Join us! This is a little out of our comfort zone, no? It's actually... Completely nuts. I mean, two brain surgeons in a play? We could really screw this up. <laughs> but failure is the gateway to innovation. Indeed it is. Please, our stories need to be told. Stories of the storms that so many of us all have to weather. Why all of us hold on to these umbrellas so tightly. Why it matters to persist. To fight the good fight. They're right. Let's do this. Let's join them and head into the storm. And into the, the theater, theater of neuroscience. Grandma, 
Sean, do we really have to weed this early? Weed? This is not weeding. And if you're going to save on the dorm by staying with me while you're in college, you need to learn my routines. Day starts at six sharp, snipping one rose for the breakfast table. You snipped your rose already. And then tending to the overall health of my rose bushes. You think these beauties grow by accident? No, it's called work. Hard work. You don't need to lecture me about work, Grandma. Oh, don't call me that. <laughs> now, just snip it off. OK, Judge Evans, but these roses are already dead. Why snip them off? I told you, it's called deadheading. Snipping off the dead ones encourages new growth and new blooms. Now, snip it. Oh, good morning to you, Dr. Albert. I said good morning to you, Dr. Albert. I think this is what they meant when they said, join us. Right, right. I'm just more used to the operating theater than the theater theater. <laughs> I said good morning to you, Dr. Albert. Looks like you're out for your morning jog. It's your neighbor, Judge. Evans, right, right, of course. Good morning, Judge Evans. Roses are looking good. Oh, no thanks to Dina here. She starts college in a week and doesn't know the difference between weeding and pruning. Hey, Doc, maybe you can tighten a few loose screws on my granddaughter. <laughs> Talk about a deadhead. Grandma! What? He's an actual real-life brain surgeon, aren't you, Dr. Albert? That's right. It's nice to meet you, Dina. What college are you I'm going sorry, to? I'm sorry, Dr. Albert, but we're on my schedule this morning, which means a swift bowl of bran and then in my chambers by 7 a.m. sharp. Enjoy your jog, doctor. Dina, try to keep up with me. Wow, she just sent you packing. That's Judge Evans, super tough. I don't remember you telling me you had a patient who was a judge. She's my neighbor, not my patient. Uh, that would explain me not remembering. What's interesting is that little blip of anxiety I felt when I thought I was not remembering. Amp that anxiety up and now add fear. That's what Judge Evans is experiencing. Losing our memory separates us from the ones we love. That's why Alzheimer's disease is such a human tragedy. Alzheimer's? Nothing wrong with the judge's memory there. That was years ago when Dina first moved in with her. It's been hard to watch over the years, not just the judge's memory loss and her decline, but the strain on Dina trying to help her. I see that in my own patients too, how hard it can be on the caregivers and the family. Memories are really the foundation of human relationships. We all say to each other, we share a memory. When those memories are lost, we lose the connection with the person we share them with. It doesn't matter whether that's a happy or sad memory. Not being able to share them anymore isolates us. And Dina's pretty isolated. No other family, so it's just her and the judge. I brought in her trash bins the other morning, and she told me just getting through breakfast is this epic battle. And the next morning is the same with some new variation. She calls it... Rinse and repeat. Rinse and repeat. How advanced is it? At this point, no intervention can help. Yet. I'm still hopeful no intervention can help yet. We hope, yeah, but all I can really do for now is help Dina out where I can. Call her when I find her grandma out wandering. Bring in her bins on trash day. Help her maintain the roses, you know, be a good neighbor. And that goes a long way. You may not be curing the judge, but providing the caregiver support, giving her information, coping strategies, being a good neighbor is its own form of healing. I guess, but as doctors, we always want to do more. I know you feel that way as well. Of course, but sharing that connection can help lift some of the weight off Dina. I wonder how it's going this morning. My job here is to remind you who she is. What led to this imprisonment, this trial, this sentence? My job is to ask, why is she being held against her will? I stand here before you all to plead her case. Rinse and repeat. Rinse and repeat. Grandma, breakfast! Number one in her class. First this, first that. <laughs> I won't embarrass her by listing her achievements. But I am here to tell you 
And she did not work this hard all my life to be in prison. Breakfast! Order. Order in the court. You will not raise your voice in my court. I don't have all day. I have to get to school. I can hear you just fine. You don't have to raise your voice. What's this? The plan. But I can't read this, Grandma, Judge Evans. Don't tell me you can't read. I don't know what this is. And you call yourself a lawyer. No, I don't. I'm your granddaughter, Dina. We're at home. It's 7 AM. Can you eat your brand for me this morning? What are you wearing? Clothing. Is that a crime now, too? You only need one blouse. I know that. Then why are you wearing three? Nonsense. Take them off. No. But just Don't you tell me what to do. Why are you raising your voice at me? Everybody's got to get angry now and again, especially when you're trapped. You feel trapped? <laughs> you bet I do. Don't you? Sometimes. Yes, Judge Evans, I feel trapped. Maybe we can make an escape together. Speaking of, I have to pick a rose for the table. Eat your bran, okay? Wouldn't that be something? To escape? Sadly, there's no escaping this for Judge Evans. No. Alzheimer's is really devastating. It attacks the most fundamental working unit of the brain, the neuron. And without working neurons, reliable information exchange is impossible. Now, wait a minute. Before we talk about what's going on with the judge, why don't we look at how neurons function in a healthy brain? Absolutely. Neurons basically have three parts. The dendrites, which are the input, the cell body, and the axon, which is the output. Neurons have both an electrical and chemical way of conveying information. When a neuron activates or fires, it sends an electrical signal from its body down the axon. That signal is called an action potential. Once it reaches the end of an axon, the neuron releases a number of chemicals known as neurotransmitters. These small molecules cross over a cleft called the synapse, which forms a connection to another neuron. A healthy brain is one where neurons maintain and strengthen existing connections and form new connections. Unfortunately, this level of connectivity isn't happening inside the judge's mind. On a fundamental level, her neurons aren't working, connecting. Good morning, Dr. Albert. Good morning, Dina. How's it going? You know the drill, rinse and repeat. Told her I was coming out to do a little deadheading. But everything looks great. She doesn't know that. <laughs> ah, right. Remember, it's OK to take some breaks. You need that. I know. I just, she keeps calling me, and she doesn't know it's me. I don't think I can handle this. I feel trapped like there's no escaping this sentence. Hey, hey, slow down. Take a breath. I know this is hard. Thanks for listening. Is there any hope, if not for my grandmother, then for the future? I know it's hard right now, but with all the research going into the disease, I am hopeful. Already the whole beta amyloid area of research is very encouraging, and we feel very optimistic about this. The whole beta what? Right. Sorry. When thinking of Alzheimer's, it really is about two proteins, abnormal proteins, which get deposited in the brain. As these proteins accumulate, normal brain function gets disrupted. Proteins? Oh, like there's something she shouldn't be eating. Sorry, the brain makes proteins. When neurons are active, they create proteins as a byproduct of their moment-to-moment -moment activity. The first of these is called beta amyloid. And normally, our brains are good at clearing up these extra proteins. Like deadheading? Exactly. When your grandmother was healthy, her brain was great at getting rid of these toxic proteins. But as you age, the brain loses that ability. These plaques form larger clumps known as beta amyloid plaques. Like deadheads that prevent further growth. Yeah. These plaques reduce the ability to learn new things. In fact, everyone has some amount of them in old age, even without dementia. But in many people, it gets worse. Another group of proteins starts to accumulate, which are quite destructive to neurons. Okay. 
Let me take a step back, okay? If you were to stop tending to this rose bush, it would fill with deadheads. But what else did your grandma say you should be doing? Weeding. Exactly. And that's where the second protein called tau comes in. Tau proteins are aggressive, like weeds growing up and around neurons, weeds that choke the life out of neurons. And it is these tau proteins that form neuronal tangles. And these tangles seem to be the most toxic to brain function. So this bush is full of beta amyloid deadhead plaques that limit further growth, which makes the bush weaker and easier for these tau weeds to creep in and tangle up the entire bush. Oh, so she was right about pruning and weeding. But the good news is that at least the bad actors have been identified, and there are several clinical trials out there thinking of different ways of removing beta amyloid and tau proteins, and it's only a matter of time. So there is hope? I don't know if it will help your grandma right now, but in the future, yes. There's reason to be optimistic. I want pancakes! Speaking of, time to rinse and repeat. Let me know if you need anything, Dina. Pancakes! Should I make her pancakes? Sometimes it's helpful just to be with her, but you also have class, so maybe not today. Pancakes! You're doing great. Remember, focus on the good moments. Thanks, Dr. Albert. I said I want pancakes! We don't have pancakes. We only have your brand. Please eat. I have to get to school. What's this? Oh, just an affidavit. Concerning? The future. Hmm. I need you to file this motion. It's our only hope. Judge Evans, this paper is bl... Never mind. No, no, don't you never mind me. A person, me! is being illegally held against her will. This petition contains all the facts and the evidence that my detention is unlawful and immoral. I would do it myself, but well, that's the problem. What is? I'm trapped. R rinse and repeat. Who do you want me to give it to? The powers that be. The powers that be are the only ones with any clout around here. I said the powers that be are the only ones with any clout around here! I heard you, but what do you want them to do about it? Enter it into the record. What for? So we can find out what's happened to everything. How everything got turned inside out. It has to do with pruning and weeding. What? You're a nice girl, but you're really not on top of things. <laughs> Show some initiative, Linda. My name isn't Linda. Linda was my mom. Mm -hmm. I'm your granddaughter, Dina. Stop being so stubborn, Linda. Mom died. Linda's gone. All you got is me. Dead head is what you are. How can you be dead when you're right in front of me? I don't think I should leave you on your own today. Oh, I'm not staying here. I'm going to work. Today? It's my Monday routine. It's Wednesday. Well, then I'm really late. They're all expecting me in my chambers. Oh, that's why you're all dressed up. Yes. Well, if I were you, I'd take off a couple of layers. How'd that happen? Did you get enough sleep last night? Uh, not so much. Uh, but enough of this. Uh, they're waiting for me in my chambers. Judge Evans, you retired three years ago. No, I'm not going to retire until we have some pancakes. I'm hungry. <laughs> well, that's good news. Why is me being hungry news? It's hard to get you to eat these days. I have to watch my figure. <laughs> you always look good, Judge Evans. And you take after me. Look at how your skin glows. Aw. Just like your mother. Right. Now can you eat? Where is your mother this morning? Can we please, please not go there? Oh, I'm happy to go there anywhere but here. Linda! Linda, come down, we're going. Linda? Come on, we're going to be late. Linda? Grandma, she's gone. Gone? Tell her to come back. Can't do that. Are you certain? Absolutely. Uh, Judge Evans, I have to get to school. I can't withdraw from another class. Well, if you're flunking out, what are you doing here? I'm not flunking out. I, I had to... Well, well, I just wanted to... 
I just wanted to have a nice breakfast with you this morning, that's all. Come on, eat up. Why don't we invite your family over? <laughs> you are my family. Just us? We're the only ones left. No men? <laughs> no, no, not anymore. Well, who's going to take out the trash? <laughs> well, <laughs> well, I do, and sometimes Dr. Albert. Oh, who needs a man around the house anyways? <laughs> I say just wash them right out. Isn't that right, Linda? <laughs> My name isn't... Just take the spoon and eat up. Judge Evans, the court orders you to take this spoon. Oh, it's beautiful, Linda. I'm going to put it in a vase. Grandma, it's a spoon to eat with. I know just the one for it. Rinse and repeat. There, a single rose from my garden. Isn't this a lovely way to start our morning, Linda? It is, Grandma. Mm. It's going to be a good day. I can feel it. I'm going to wash my hair. At the sink or in the shower? At the sink. Well, let me help you. I don't want you rubbing soap in your eyes like you did last time. I don't need any help. It's the easiest thing in the world. No one ever forgets how to wash their hair. You might. Wash, rinse, repeat. They write it on the bottle. No one forgets how to do that. Rinse and repeat. Just rinse and... Oh, this life? It whizzes by so fast, I... I can't remember all of that. I'll remember for you. I'm trapped. Trapped! I'll help you wash your hair if you want. Tip your head over the sink, get the water just right. That's going to feel real nice. Wash, rinse, repeat. That's going to feel so good. Hey, what's that song you used to sing? Oh, I love that one. <laughs> sing it with me. The words, I... There are no more words. That's okay, we can just hum it. <laughs> what a wonderful morning we've had. I love this song. And I love you, Judge. I love you, Grandma. <laughs> It's amazing all the little fights we fight to help and support each other. It's exhausting for Dina. You've talked to her about getting enough sleep, right? Absolutely. She calls it nocturnal pruning. Beyond keeping her sanity, sleep is critical for our brain's health. It actually plays a role in clearing some of the toxic proteins from regions in the brain, especially vulnerable to Alzheimer's. So for Dina and all of us, we need to get enough good sleep to preserve our minds both in the present and the future. And after a night of her own nocturnal pruning, tomorrow morning, Dina will wake up and do it all over again. But it's like you said, you have to focus on the good moments. Yeah, and even though it's a fight she can't win, she does it anyway. To me, that's real courage. Dina's mantra is really the right approach. Rinse, repeat, trial and error. And when we find ourselves in those brainstorms, we need to move the needle little by little and eventually that will lead us to breakthrough. Like for instance, the work you and your team are doing with eradicating tumor cells. You're right, or look at what your team is doing with neuroengineering. Exactly, there is hope for effective intervention and even some of the scariest cases, like a giant brain tumor. Oh, I've got one of those cases right now. Like how big, the size of an orange? Bigger. Really? Really, I'll show you. His name's Sean. The client wants to buy a varied data set which we can deliver after the first two breakdowns. How'd he present? What were his symptoms? Problems at work. Everything okay? There's a man very far away chopping down a tree in the snow. And I hear it all the time. You think he's going crazy? 
All I know is he keeps saying he hears a man chopping down a tree in the snow. When the brain changes so dramatically, it's like Sean's whole personality is gone. And if this tumor doesn't come out soon, well, I hope I can bring him back. For more information on BrainWorks, the theater of neuroscience, visit brainworkstheater.org.